Hello there, welcome to 10 tips for military in combat and dwarf fortress. In this video I put up a list of different things to make your life with the military more easy. Because honestly, military and combat is maybe one of the most bug-ridden and complex parts of the game, so I really hope that I can make your life a little bit easier and bring you a couple of ideas that you haven't had so far. So let's get started with number one. A pretty commonly known, albeit very, very powerful thing is ammo preservation via channels behind your targets. This works for Marks Dwarfs and it also works for siege weapons. The logic behind it is quite simple. Whenever a projectile in the game smacks a wall, the game checks if they're a level below to drop the ammo or not. If there is a level below, the ammo will drop below and be intact. If there is no level below, the ammo will explode or, or disappear. I don't know what happens with these things. They are just destroyed if they hit the wall without a slope below. So the easiest thing to do is just dig a channel in behind your uh, targets. With the newest seam version, we can also do channels in front of the targets. This wasn't possible in previous versions. And this way, your archers will most likely not destroy their ammo. Works for siege weapons too. This way you can use boulders more often or even ballista bolts if you put up a channel at the end of your firing range. Now, number two is going to concern those gear issues that people often have, like how to get your squad nice and green equipped here. So first off, make sure that you have a setup which is replacing clothing and exact matches only. This is often a common source of a problem. Make sure that you confirm all your changes. If you just right click, your changes will not get applied. Happened to me a lot. Really derpy, but really powerful way to gimp yourself. And the other thing that is the most powerful thing so far for me is put up a armor stockpile inside the barracks. So armor stockpile works like this and you tell the armor stockpile to take that stuff from either the metalsmith's forge directly or from a stockpile that you have assigned, whatever. The idea behind it is keep the armor stockpile as close to your soldiers as possible. Maybe even build your barracks around the armor stockpile. If one barracks has to be far away from this armor stockpile, just assign the squad for a couple of months in the vicinity of the armor stockpile and put the already geared up squad somewhere else will work fine. These were so far the most powerful things and if it's still jammed, feel free to just delete all these uh, things inside here and put up a new suit of gear. That worked for me because sometimes I had, the, I had it occasionally that people just got jammed inside of a pathing routine. I don't know, it's really really the best that I can provide with these tips I have so far brought all my squad screen. So number three is the therapy squad. So therapy squad is a way to make your dwarves a little bit happier. As you might notice dwarves get unhappy and most interestingly enough most dwarves have a need for martial training. So it really pays off to put up a small little squad containing unhappy dwarves and let them just do a little bit of a training inside the barracks. That's really really powerful way to make sure that these dudes are going to be a little bit happier with their lives. The other way to use the therapy squad is to assign a dwarf that just isn't going to do his things that make him happy. Really powerful for people that don't seem to want to pray somewhere, that don't want to fulfill their needs even though the rooms are there, socializing and whatnot. Put them into a um, squad that has no barracks assigned and tell them to train. They cannot do it and somehow that magically overrides sometimes all the other things they wanted to do in the first place. But the um, I really want to emphasize here mostly happiness is gained by dwarves often by combat and if you have unhappy dwarves just let them fight they love to do this they don't have to do this forever also so number four is regarding weapon types there are roughly three big weapon uh, categories in dwarf fortress that's cutting weapons in the form of swords and axes that's piercing weapons in the form of picks and spears, and that's blunt weapons in the form of warhammers and maces. So 
You might have already noticed that sieging enemies also categorize their squads in a certain weapon type. What's the advantage of that? So, cutting weapons are good at severing limbs and are really good against unarmored targets, but they are not that good against heavily armored targets. Also, they suck against necromancers. Blunt weapons are awesome against necromancers because they don't sever limbs that can't be resurrected. Also, skeletons can get bashed by hammers quite well. All in all, that's a good weapon against undead enemies. The piercing weapon, though, is awesome against everything that's heavily armored and has organs because it pierces uh, armor very well and inflicts a lot of pain when you get stabbed in the liver or something like that. The gist of it is, there is an advantage to every weapon type, and every weapon type also has certain disadvantages. By categorizing your squads in a certain weapon type, you can make sure that you don't have that occasional oopsie in a very, very dangerous situation. And believe me, you don't want to cut off limbs in the, in the vicinity of a necromancer. That really leads to a bad time. Or fun, however you want to call it. So, let's lead on to number five, and that's how to teach your archers not to go Leroy Jenkins and melee into the face of the enemy. So, the idea here is very, very simple. Archers will try to go melee the moment there is somebody close enough to that. An archer will also path constantly forward to the enemy, and as soon as they are close enough to charge, they will do so and club away with a crossbow as a hammer, which is a horrible hammer. So, to avoid that, the only way that you can really do is lock your archers up in a room and make sure they cannot path towards the enemy. That's the entire story. Make sure your thing is enclosed by fortifications so they can shoot through. Also make sure that the fortification has a roof on top of it because your crossbow dwarves, they will climb across that fortification too. You know, they are not that smart if you don't, uh, if you don't make sure they, they work well. So station your crossbow dwarves in a room locked up as impossible as possible to path towards the enemy and make sure that you respect one thing when you assign a stationing order the blinking dart here is a radius so they will try to flock around that radius if i remember correctly it's a grid of three on three so it's quite big actually that means make your archery positions large enough make them preferably a little bit higher because being one or two Z levels above the enemy also makes it harder to path towards them and they can shoot downwards. No bonuses added though. And yeah, make sure that the stationing area is not too small because otherwise if you have a teensy tiny tower around that, they will just stand in front of the tower and the whole problem will continue. All right, I hope that's helpful. Number six, I want to go into schedules here for a moment because my typical schedule looks like this. I let my dudes train 24-7 to make them as godlike as possible. But when we get on it here into the monthly schedule or into the editing in general, we can go and assign which parts of the squad are ought to train and which parts of the squad are ought to do something else. So when we go into a monthly schedule, just to give you an impression, here I can tell my dudes for the month of Granite that Let's say these dudes here are going to train and the rest of the squad is going to go on a patrol. So we have already configured a patrol here. Boom, just like that. Route one, be it as it is. And then we can get back into the schedule. And now next month, let's let these dudes do the patrol and the rest do the training. This way you can cycle through, maintain big training and have still people constantly on patrols. You can do... A lot of little things with that. I just wanted to show you that it's actually not that hard to pull it off to get some uh, decent cycling in. It's just a micromanagement heavy thing to assign it to every month, but it's a bullet you have to bite if you really want to perfect it. You can, of course, assign it globally, like here, then it's, uh, then it's affecting the entire um, year, but uh, you really don't want to get your dwarves rusty. So, number seven is training via prisoners. This is a really neat one. You end up in the course of the game when you use cage traps with a lot of cage things inside of your cages. So, ideally, to make the most out of it, you just lock them up in a room 
that's uh, nicely closed up. Then you station a squad in the vicinity, link the cage to a lever, flick the lever, open the cage this way while the squad is alone there or whoever you want to train and let these dwarves fight. Why is that so interesting? Sparing and training is one thing, but your dwarves learn fastest while real while doing real combat. So the idea is if you have any captured goblins or the like, strip them of all their gear, put them put your recruit into iron or steel gear, give them a fat armor, let them go and fight some unarmed goblins. There's almost no risk involved, even the crappiest dwarf will beat the hell out of these goblins because they cannot really penetrate their armor while gaining a lot of combat XP. This is a great way of making a good use out of all those captured goblin thieves and whatever stocks up over the course of the time. So, number eight regards the training and the equipment of your people. It's really important to note that when your dwarves do training, Try to give them always a weapon. Try to avoid unarmed combat, because wrestling is a weird one. When your dwarves go wrestling in the barracks, they also do practice throws. Now, that's an issue because when they slam somewhere, they can get injured. I've even heard of cases that they that they had lethal injuries on because they, they fell on the head. So the gist of it is if you want to do wrestling, if you want to train wrestling dwarves, make sure they are super well geared up, especially a helmet is a must have so they can't suffer lethal head injuries that easily. So wrestling is a little bit weird. It is as it is right now, but all the other weapons, they have weirdly enough, no, no injury risk involved during the training. So, number nine, quality matters a lot. So, make sure to have your gear only of the finest crafts dwarf ship as possible. This is, might look, sound a little bit generic, but I really want to emphasize to you why. So, gear that's made of high quality does not only have a higher chance of dealing more damage, Armor made out of uh, made of high quality also have a higher chance to deflect blows, and that's where things get interesting, because deflecting a blow is in Dwarf Fortress one of the ways to get completely uninjured out of a lot of things. So, the higher the quality of the armor, the higher the chance that somebody will not even tr manage to put a dent in your into your dwarf. Whereas low quality gear doesn't have these uh, these these qualities. So make sure that you are only assigning the smiths or or the smithing to certain people because it really pays off to make sure that your legendary weapon and armor smiths do all the work to get the most out of your military. It really matters a lot. It really, really does a lot of uh, number um, push if you have highest quality gear versus standard quality gear. Now, number 10 is going to be one thing that I want to introduce because I got this, uh, I got a lot of talking about it, and that's a uniform setup that makes sense because there are so darn many items in the, uh, in, in the selection. So I want to talk real quick how it works, the uh, gear stuff, and which items harmonize quite well. So the game is all about covering your body parts with armor. Each body part that's not covered with armor is an issue. It can get destroyed quite easily. So basically, your dwarves should have as much of their body covered in armor. So an ideal combo that, or, or the best combo that I found according to the Wikipedia, is a mail shirt, a helmet, greaves, high boots, gauntlets, a breastplate, and shield. This way, the mail shirt and the breastplate cover most of the torso, Helmet goes without saying. Greaves and high boots cover most of the feet and the and the legs. Gauntlets for the hands and shields are quite useful in general. Shields, by the way, wooden shields can block as well as metal shields. They're just lightweight and do less damage in a shield bash. Steel shields are heavier, do more damage in a shield bash, but they don't block better. Don't get under the impression that they would block any better. No, no. They actually do mostly more damage. So, you can spice this uh, gear now up with a little bit of everyday clothing, like 
socks and shoes and whatnot. There are real power gaming things there that I don't want to go too deep into. This setup here is okay. It will serve you on each day pretty well and I hope that's helpful for you. Of course, what I did not, uh, what I did fail to mention here, archers of course needs, need a crossbow and a quiver. That's irreplaceable. You need those. Archers can wear metal or leather just as you want to. I personally prefer leather though for the archers because they are moving faster and I don't want them to be in a melee situation anyway, so I don't bother gearing them up too heavily. All right, I hope that was helpful and of course, this is just a fraction of things that you can do with the military, so as always, feel free to put up your personal tips and tricks that you find extremely helpful with military there, so we can all learn a little bit more, and also ask away if there are any questions. Feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video, I'd deeply appreciate subscriptions. Big, big thanks to the supporters, you guys are really making my day shine, and my family happy as well, and therefore, a uh, quick pointer to the support links, check out Patreon, Paypal and buy me a coffee, I'd be delighted if you give them a look. If not, hey, you, you are still here after the ads, so I really appreciate that as well. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.